to get people to commit to um, health, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard to get people to commit to it, right? You could say, well, listen, your kids are relying on you. Eh, I'm going to live. You know, you're going to have a better lifestyle. Eh, I'm going to live. You're going to be able to do this, but you're going to look better. You're going to do this. And everybody wants a shortcut, right? Whatever's going to be the fastest way to do it. Mm -hmm. What what can, if a person's running a business or if a person's a salesperson or if a person's an executive, if a person's a content creator, whatever you want to call it, parent, spouse, what what can a person performs better, the better the mood they're in? No doubt. You sell better, you you father better, you husband better, you wife better, you mother better, you do everything better, right? Mm -hmm. So what are two, three things a person can do to improve their mood when they go throughout the day? First of all, when you say mood, what... And I convert that to physiology. So that's what I'm going to do. And you say mood or emotional state. What does that mean in the human body? If you said, Gary, what is a mood? What is an emotional state? I would tell you it's a collection of neurotransmitters, right, bound to oxygen. So in other words, mood is a recipe. So if you said, I want to make happiness, okay, that's so much serotonin, so much dopamine, so much norepinephrine, so much epinephrine, you mix that up, boom, you have the emotion of happiness. Um, you know, I want elation, joy, passion, arousal. Okay, you, you change the level of serotonin, you change the level of dopamine, and the, so you create mood. The ingredients for mood are neurotransmitters. So where do neurotransmitters come from? They're made in the gut. 90% of the serotonin in our body is right here. If you don't have it here, you can't have it here. And so like, for example, you know, the, the serotonin hypothesis of depression says if you're low on serotonin, you're by definition depressed. So your mood is depressed. Do you actually have depression or do you have a deficiency in serotonin? So now if the serotonin hypothesis of depression is true, that means I have low serotonin. Um, and so wouldn't you think that if I'm depressed because I have low serotonin that the fix would be to raise serotonin? Mm -hmm. But that's not what we do. We take people that are low on serotonin and we put them on SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So what these do, they bind to little sites in your brain and they essentially slow the uptake of serotonin. And the, and the idea is if we ration what little serotonin you have, uh, then you won't go off a cliff. Well, if we know 90% of the serotonin is made right here in our gut, why don't we go to the factory that makes serotonin and increase its production? If I wanna improve my mood, Let's produce more of the ingredients that create mood. And so how do we make serotonin? Well, we take an amino acid called tryptophan and we methylate it into the neurotransmitter serotonin. What's needed to do that? Methylfolate, uh, B complexes, um, the, the uh, methylform of, of uh, cobalamin, trimethylglycine, basic nutrients can actually improve the methylation cycle and the utilization transportation of serotonin. So I would, if, if you, are an entrepreneur, if you are a busy mother, busy father, if, if being mentally on your game is something that you need in order to succeed in your career, mm -hmm. I would focus first on your gut. Um, because we make dopamine in our gut too. How do we make dopamine? We take tryptophan, fetal alanine, we convert it into a neurotransmitter called dopamine. Could serotonin deficiency be a deficiency in the amino acid tryptophan? Yes. Could, could depression be an inability to methylate proper amounts of serotonin? Yes. And now, now we're up here messing with the mind. We're putting um, you know, neuroplasticity altering chemicals in the mind to fix a nutrient deficiency. Just like Dana White had a nutrient deficiency in trimethylglycine and he was on cardiovascular medication to fix a nutrient deficiency. Now he's on an amino acid. So his body can actually break these compounds down. You know, a lot of times people that have hypothyroid are, are deficient in selenium, thymine, and um, often iodine. And so why are we not first testing for what's missing from what God gave us? That's my whole mantra is that, you know, we're not as sick, we're not as diseased, we're not as pathological as we think we are. We are nutrient deficient. And if we would, you know, if you want to see magic happen in the human body, Pat, you, you, you give it the raw material it needs to do its job. And so what does it need to do its job? Um, first of all, I would, I, would, I would focus on your gut and we can talk about what you could do to do that. But our, our ultimate human superpower is sleep. If you're not sleeping, you're not performing, full stop. So you're not performing at your best athletically, you're certainly not performing at your best cognitively. So if you wanna get an edge on, on the, the rest of your competition, you have to develop a sleep hygiene or sleep routine. If you ask most of your listeners, what do you do to go to sleep? They'll just say, I don't know, I get in bed. 
<laughs> right? Like, well, when do you go to bed? Whenever I finish doing my shit, you know, like when I'm, I mean, sometimes it's one o'clock in the morning, sometimes it's 11 in the morning. I can think about an activity people do before they want to go to sleep. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so 10, 11 That's a good reason night. to put it off, right? you know, but none of them are doing it seven nights a week. Okay. Come on, Come on dude. Yeah. I mean, okay. okay. I agree. Yeah. Um, so, and that's well, actually very that good for good, though. That's good for your sleep. Oh, dude, that's the best way to reduce catecholamines and put you right to sleep. And you tell your, you know. You can see a lot of husbands showing this clip to their wives. Yeah, yeah. I'm, or I'm vice versa. You, wives, if you want to extend your life, make love before you go to bed. That's a material fact. But if you ask most people about sleep, um, this is the most bullied thing in their schedule. Sleep is the bastard stepchild of your day. You know, we push it around because it's the easiest thing for us to manipulate in our schedule. Um, so... You need to prioritize self-care or else you will never be able to be selfless. And this is why 82% of all autoimmune diseases happen to women. If you take all, all autoimmune mm -hmm. diseases category, mm -hmm. about 80, 82% of autoimmune disease affect women. Why is that because autoimmune is you know racist or sexist? No, it's because women have a tendency to be more selfless. They suffer from things like caregiver syndrome. You know, they put the needs of others before themselves. They're almost genetically programmed to do this. To, Very interesting. To bear children. Um, so they, they lack more sleep because they're the ones that are taking care of the kids and all this other stuff. So that is why the, wow. Okay. That they makes will sense. deprive themselves for sleep for the sure. kids. They will exhaust themselves for their spouse. Um, and they will put the needs of others, uh, you know, as, as, as a broad statement before the needs of themselves. Sure. So women have a tendency to put themselves in the backseat a lot more often than men mm. do. And this constant lack of self-care, which they will very often look at as being selfish, um, they want to be selfless. So they wake up in the morning, going to give all my time to my kids. Then I'm going to go and give my time to my career. And then I'm going to give my time to my spouse. And then I'm going to give it to the kids and then I'm going to go to bed. And so the first thing that I would say is, is develop a sleep routine, right? And, and sleep hygiene works like this. Um, if you want to, I mean, you want to be a super sleeper, you're going to be a super performer because everyone knows sleep is good for you, but few people know why, like wh what's happening during deep sleep. The practice of milk, good quality sleep. Yeah. But that's number one right there, regular sleep-wake cycle. Um, that but is- You were going somewhere. So what is the behavior? You said, what do you do to go to sleep? So what, what do you do to go to sleep? So let's so let's just dive into sleep real quick. So Because a lot of people struggle with sleep at night. They don't know how to go to sleep at night. I'll tell you why most people listening to this podcast are not sleeping. They're not sleeping because they are body tired, but mind awake. As their environment quiets, their mind wakes up and they will tell you, I am not falling asleep because I am thinking of the most innocuous shit. Like I'm, you know, should I have a dinner party? Uh, you know, did, did my belt match my shoes today? Did I get everything on my grocery list? Did I return that Instagram post? Nothing that couldn't wait till the next day. This is called rumination. And we ruminate at night because of a category of neurotransmitters called catecholamines. As these neurotransmitters rise, it creates a wakened state. So your body tired. You're exhausted, mm. but you're laying there mind awake. And I'm going to tell you how to solve that in a second. But first, you know, if we just isolate, what's so important about sleep? Okay, well, specific things happen during sleep that don't happen during any other time of our cycle. So if you're going to push anything around in your schedule, put, push meetings and travel around and prioritize sleep and exercise. And so when you look at what happens during deep sleep, for example, um, and this is the only time that the brain is actually eliminating waste. And so we have a lymphatic system, which everybody knows of. You know, your lymphatics get swollen when you get a sore throat. Um, we got lymph nodes under our armpits. We got them in our groins. We got them all over the body to get rid of waste. In the brain, it's called the glymphatic system. And this system is only active during deep sleep. So if you don't get deep sleep, your brain doesn't detoxify. It doesn't eliminate waste. It doesn't repair. It doesn't regenerate. So you're actually building up toxicity in the brain by not having deep sleep. Nowadays, more than ever, the brand you wear reflects and represents who you are. So for us, if you wear a future looks bright hat or a value taming gear, you're telling the world, I'm optimistic, I'm excited about what's going to be happening, but you're a free thinker, you question things, you like debate. And by the way, last year, 120,000 people got a piece of future looks bright gear with value taming. We have so many new things. 
The cufflinks are here. New future looks bright. This is my favorite, the green one. Just yesterday, somebody placed an order for 100 of these. If you watch the PBD podcast, you got a bunch to choose from. White ones, black ones. If you, if you, if you smoke cigars and you come to our cigar lounge, we have this high quality lighter cutter and a holder for the cigars. We got sweaters with the Vitamin logo on it. We got mugs. We got a bunch of different things. But if you believe the future looks bright, if you follow our content and what we represent with Valuetainment, with, with PVD Podcast, go to vtmerch.com. And by the way, if you order right now, there's going to be a special VT gift insight just for you. So again, go to vtmerch.com, place your order, tell the world that you believe the future looks bright. If you enjoy this video, you want to watch more videos like this, click here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click here.